Hello, everybody. So today I'm going to be talking about how to create this style of geometric design um, where we're going to be implementing Illustrator designs into Photoshop and kind of fractalizing them in this geometric design. So before we get started, though, um, the first thing you want to do is find an image that you actually want to use um, in this particular project that I did there. That was one of the photos I took. But um, I also like to kind of do designs with like clouds and stuff. So I'm using Pexels, which is a copyright free uh, website. And so I am going to be using their pictures for my design. So I'm going to drag that onto my desktop just so it's an easy access. And then I'm going to place it into Photoshop. Now, um, if you're on the homepage, you want to just start with a new one. Now I'm printing mine on large paper, but if you want just a standard sheet, you can go a little smaller. Um, now that I think about it, I'm actually going to make this one a square. I kind of want to make a square out of this one. So I'm going to go, uh, the, uh, just the 2000 point square grid, and then I'm going to drag this in and size it. So there is no white spaces on my page. I want to make sure that the content is interesting enough. And one other thing that I always suggest doing with, uh, projects like this is also kind of giving it your own spin, giving it your own like design. So I like to adjust my photo just a little bit more too. I like to change the colors uh, so that it's kind of making it my own a little bit more. I like how this teal and this pink look together. I'm going to lighten it a little bit. So yeah, so then I'm happy. Now that I'm happy with how it looks a little bit different, I'm going to go in and I'm going to make my design. So to make your design, this was what the first design that we saw when we first came in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to file new and I'm just going to make a standard like letter size. You don't need to get too fancy with it. Um, and I'm going to go to my shapes. I want to make sure that my shape builder has no fill. I don't want it to be white because if it's white, when you copy and paste it into it, it's going to show up. And then I also am going to make mine, um, to, I want it to be one point or to three points wide for strokes or the line work that I'm doing, just because then I can have um, just a variety of lines and then the lines will actually be visible for me. So that's what I am going to do. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I really like triangles and circles. I like how the juxtaposition of them um, is kind of like hard and soft. So by the way, if you don't know how to make a triangle in Photoshop or in Illustrator, I should say, um, you get the star tool. And when it's in star mode, make sure that you still have your mouse clicked. Don't really, as soon as you release your mouse, it won't work. And then go down like this. Now, if you are setting it, you might notice, okay, it's not quite even. So look at how that isn't quite even. There's an easy way to fix that. Make sure that your triangle is selected and go to here and then go to 90 degrees. Now I can just move it just like that. And I can center it just like that. So it's at a 90 degree. And now I know that that's perfectly straight. So instead of trying to remake that triangle in the exact same size, I'm just going to copy it and paste it three times. So I'm going to make this one and then I'm going to go back to here and there's one more stacked on there and I'm just going to eyeball it the best I can. You can also watch the, the, the lines there to make sure that it's eyeballed correctly. Now, another thing that I get asked a lot is how do I make a diamond? Um, and diamonds are popular. So um, I'm going to quick show you how to do that. There are two ways to make a diamond and I'm just going to turn off the eye on this layer and make a new layer so that you can, um, I know I can just turn this layer off then. So there are two ways to make a diamond. You can make a square and then you can curve it to the side like this and you can just manually make it using the white selector tool, double clicking on the point, and then you can bring it out like this. So that's one way you can make a diamond. You can make it thinner or thicker. You have a little bit more freedom with it. Now, the other way that you can make a diamond is by going to the um, star tool, making a triangle. Oopsies. I'm going to size this out a little bit better. Go to properties, make it at 90 degrees. There we go. Uh, I'm going to make it a little smaller. There we go. So I've made one triangle. 
I'm going to copy and paste it and I'm going to flip it using this guy right up here, flip vertically. And now I'm just going to stack them on top of each other, just like this, select both of them. I'm going to actually bring this down just a little bit. I'm going to select this one, use my cursor keys. So the arrow keys on my keyboard to bring them together. So that crosses over just a little bit. There we go. I think that's just about right. Select both of them, go to Shape Builder, and then I can build them together. There we go. So that's how you can make your diamond. All right, so now I'm going to turn, go back to layers. I don't want a diamond. I want triangles. So I'm going to turn that layer off. And if you keep your layers off, you can delete them or just keep them off uh, because we're going to be copying and pasting this in. So then the next one I'm going to show you is the ellipsy tool and I'm going to bring it from the center. And if you would like a perfectly circular, uh, or it to grow directly from the center, hold down alt on your keyboard, and that's going to grow it directly from the center, but also allow you to make your circle at any shape. Now, if you make it so that you can see this cross between this pink cross, that means that it is a perfect circle. Now, if you don't want to try and finesse that, you can find your center again or wherever you want to start it. Alt and hold shift. And now it'll grow perfectly. And doesn't matter what you do, it'll only make a perfect circle. So then I can move this guy around. So I'm just going to move him right here. I want him to kind of nestle in here. I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm going to bring a couple circles like this. And so I'm happy with this. I kind of like this kind of almost psychedelic uh, ice cream cone look. Um, and I think that it's going to kind of go well with my clouds. So I'm happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is I have Photoshop open already and I have Illustrator open. I'm going to select all of my lines and go to Photoshop and I'm going to paste it in as a smart object. I want it to be I want to be able to size it without losing any quality. So then I bring it in. Oh, and then I didn't select everything. Apparently let's try this again. Uh, copy. <laughs> there we go. And paste. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to size it. I don't want it to go all the way to the outside, but I want it to be centered and I want it to be in the middle. So now we are going to set this. So I am going to um, rasterize my cloud picture and I have my smart vector object. There are two ways you can do this. You can leave it black or you can change it so that it is white as well by going control I. Now it's a white one. Um, I am going to control I. I'm going to keep it with black um, just so I can see it, but I think I'm going to change it to white after everything's done. So I'm going to now right click on this and rasterize the layer. And I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select the area. So this is where things are going to get a little bit um, complicated. So I'm going to do this a couple times just so you can watch it happen and then you'll be able to kind of figure it out from there. So the first thing you want to do is magic wand tool. If you don't know where it is in default Photoshop, this is the main one under that selection. If you go to uh, the shortcut letter W and you select the third one down, you can then get the magic wand tool. Then I'm going to drag it somewhere and I'm going to pick what I think to be like the most interesting places and I'm going to kind of combine them into the center to give it that broken up ice cream cone look. And I'm going to then go copy, paste, and then it's on its own layer. And then I click the letter V and then I move it up because V is the shortcut tool for selection. And I use my arrow keys to just move it right into place. And I want it to be as precise as possible. Then I go back up to my vector layer. And it's important to be able to navigate your layers on this one. Because if you're on the wrong layer, it won't work. I'm going to go up to the top. And I'm going to then, while I'm still selected in Magic Wand Tool, I'm going to move it down. Go to the bottom layer, copy, paste, V. And move that up. And then that one just clicked into place. But if I wanted to, I could just use the cursor keys to bring it into a better spot. Now there's another thing you can do too. Um, 
this will start to get busy really quickly. So let's say you wanted some of these to maybe have a moment of rest for your eye. You could go, um, go up to here, wand, click on this. So I'm going to have these little points as kind of just blank, like moments of rest. So I am going to select that area. I'm going to make a new layer and just have this one be above my vector layer. And I can then go to it whenever I want. I just pick I for ink dropper. I'm going to pick up colors that actually do exist in the picture. I'm not going to make up colors for this. And then I'm going to pick um, G or I say, I say it's a shortcut for gallon or gradient, but really it's just the paint bucket tool. And then I'm going to dump that color right in there. And then if I want to, I can go back W, click on the other side, make sure you're on the right layer go to your top layer again so that it's on a different layer. You don't want it on the same vector layer because if you then decide you want to change the color of your lines, it's not going to work. And then I'm going to go to I for ink dropper, choose a color, and then G and oopsies. Whoop, whoop. I click G and make sure I'm on the other layer and dump it in. All right, so that's how you can kind of put in just blank colors. Now, it's important not to put them all as blank colors in here. If you do that, you're going to end up with just kind of a boring picture, and you're kind of going to lose that nice, interesting fractalization that you want from this. So I'm going to actually kind of mirror this one here with the same look, and you don't have to worry about crossing over your lines. You can go right underneath your lines here. All right, copy, paste, and then V. And then I'm going to bring it over and keep using my cursor keys to bring it in. Go up to my vector layer, W shortcut for magic wand, click on the space, move it while I'm still in wand, go to the bottom layer, control C for copy, control V for paste, V to move it. And then I drag it into place using my cursors to move it just in the last piece. And then you just repeat it. I think I'm going to have this one actually be a blank color too. I think that that would look kind of nice to have that. Again, I like the idea of moments of rest. I, and I'm going to make this one, this really pretty teal. And then I'm going to dump that color right in there. Ooh, that is a little too much though. I'm looking at it and like, mm -mm, nope, too much. I'm going to bring it over. That's still too, uh, I think saturated. I really like the airy earthy feel of it. So I'm just going to kind of poke around till I find just the right color. And I think that looks better. All right. So then I can continue on my merry way and kind of getting the other ones in. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this one with a color too, but I'm going to make this one have a different line. So again, I'll go to someplace interesting, go to the bottom layer, copy, paste the and then I can move it into place. All right, and so you repeat that until you pretty much have every area filled with your de desired space until you get something like this, or I have another one over here, something like this, which I hadn't finished, but this is another tester that I had done earlier as well. So that is how you can create that fractal art design. Um, I hope that you found this helpful, and I wish you luck on your own fractal designs. I look forward to seeing what you create.